he's a marvelous individual with people. He's he, everybody loves this guy, you know. Uh, he's he's uh, he makes you want to work. He makes you want to to, to dream. William Findell received his medical education at Acadia, Dalhousie, McGill, and Oxford. In 1953, he joined Wilder Penfield in his groundbreaking work on epilepsy at the Montreal Neurological Institute. We were interested at that time particularly in what we call temporal lobe seizures, uh, which were not like ordinary convulsions where you have twitching or shaking of the limbs, but uh, a type of seizure where the where the patient becomes um, has certain emotions like a f sense of fear or a sense of uh, uh, familiarity with something that had happened before in his lifetime, perhaps a little dream like a flashback and so on. They were psychic seizures as Dr. Penfield used to call them. So Dr. Final was uh, able to show that these uh, uh, abnormal behavior during a seizure were related, related to uh, uh, abnormal discharge within the amygdala uh, or its immediate uh, vicinity. And he could show that the stimulation in that area uh, reproduce uh, 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 these same uh, abnormal behavior. And by a corollary, if you removed that surgically and took away that trigger point, you cured the, cured the patient's seizure. So that was a very exciting time because up to that time no one had ever really thought the amygdala had much to do uh, with brain function generally uh, and also no one had shown its relationship to temporal lobe seizure. In 1955, Dr. Findell accepted a position at the University of Saskatchewan. Along with the challenge of helping to create a new faculty, the appointment gave him the chance to explore a relationship that he foresaw becoming increasingly important, that between medicine and technology. When I went out to Saskatoon, well, really almost before I moved there to take over the neurosurgical unit and to build it up, because that was the first in a new hospital that they'd had, uh, I talked to Harold Johns, who was actually a, a, one of the best uh, radiation physicists. He just finished with his team the Cobalt 60 bomb for cancer treatment. And we were having a cup of tea one day and I said, you know, they have this scanner in Boston, but it could be made much better by instead of making a square scanner, it should be a round scanner because the head is round, not square most of the time. And we published a nice paper on that. About, uh, we reviewed about 125 patients who had brain tumors and we found that Oh, in perhaps almost 90% of these, this scanner, which was a very simple technique, uh, would pick up the location and the size and the side of the tumor. So it became very helpful. And that was uh, when I came back to Montreal uh, in 1959. Uh, one of the things I asked Dr. Penfield uh, to provide for me was to get a second model of this Saskatoon scanner. Uh, which we did, and we used it here for about another 15 years. It was the grandfather of the whole PET system. He bridges the boundaries, the tra traditional barriers between the engineering disciplines and the neuroscience disciplines and clinical neurosurgery and neurology. He has a deep appreciation of all of these different domains and the need to integrate them. I think that's, that's uh, one of the things that I, I think is, is uh, profoundly important in, in trying to assess Bill Findell. He gets it. I have great confidence in uh, the fact that if you tell experts in their field what your medical needs are, eventually they'll come around and give you the piece of equipment that you can apply to diagnosis or treatment of a patient. This relationship works both ways. When Dr. Findell became director of the Neuro in 1972, he was instrumental in giving technologists what they needed to advance their work in brain imaging. In acquiring Canada's first PET scanner, CAT scanner and MRI, and raising the funds to house them in new pavilions, he ensured that the Montreal Neurological Institute stayed at the forefront of neurological research. It's not just that he sits in an ivory tower and thinks about things. He, he, he knows how to bring it about. 
And to, to bring it about, you have to have a certain amount of, of uh, strength of character, determination, megalomania. <laughs> All of these things go together, but uh, that's Bill. He makes things happen. A pioneering neurosurgeon, a technological visionary, a gifted administrator and builder, a respected scholar, William Findell is a true Renaissance man. I think uh, he's now 85 years old, you know, and uh, and uh, what's interesting uh, about him is uh, this uh, sustain and in interest that he has, you know. We uh, and he likes uh, he he's just like a, a resident now. He has uh, some time. I think he has even more enthusiasm still for for what uh, goes on. The exciting part of that is if you put it all together. You're dealing with the neuroanatomy, which I learned at Oxford. <laughs> You're dealing with the uh, localization of the epileptic discharge, which the brain imaging helps us now with enormously. You're dealing with the surgical technique, which Dr. Penfield and the group of us working with him developed a whole new operation, which is often called the Montreal procedure for treating temporal lobe seizures. And then you have a patient who is disabled by seizures, a young person who's unable to get married or have friends or go into school or get a job, and you, you cure his seizures with the operation and he goes back to normal life. That is, I think, <coughs> excuse me, that is absolutely a, a wonderful sense of satisfaction.